Hi everyone and welcome to Triple M Adventures with Bill. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to my channel and possibly becoming a Patreon. This is a review of the Torquit RC P200 adjustable power supply. So let's uh, take a closer look at it. Now here is the P200 power supply and it comes with a AC cable. Now this has got an American plug on it so I'd have to cut that off for South Africa. It also comes with a USB cable so that you can do the firmware updates. They also supply um, a banana plug lead with two crocodile clips on the end and also an XT60 for you to solder to up, up to whatever you want to solder it up to. So that's what comes in the box. Now at the back we have the AC on and off switch, we've got the AC input and we've got the DC input, which is, which is an XT60 and can do 7 to 28 volts. We go back to the front. Now we turn on the button at the back and then we hit this little button here. And I'll tell you a story about that a bit later. Now, all the controls that we have are the two scroll wheels. Now, if I use this scroll wheel here, you can see we can bring the amps up. We can go from 1 to 10 amps. So we're going to scroll back. To one amp and then if we click this button it will show us the USB output okay and we click again and we come back to the opening screen this side we can adjust our voltage now we can go down to one volt and up to 30 maximum of 30 volts so we come back down to back down to let's leave it on five okay and if we long press here we can see all the settings. I'm not going to go through these in details. You can, they're fairly obvious what they are, but we can reset, do a factory reset. We can find the uh, firmware version. We can change the style from dark to a lighter color. I'm going to take it back to the dark. We can change the language. And then we scroll up to the top to go back. Now, once you've put the banana plugs in, which are four millimeter, you can then output the voltage. So at the moment, we're set up one amp at uh, five volts. Now to do so, you just short click and you can see now we're outputting the voltage. And then to turn off, we can click again. So now let's have a look. We'll let's uh, take a look at the voltage and test it against my multimeter. I wanted to start off first by using my multimeter to test the voltage. I know this is not extremely accurate, but it was just out of reference. So we use this scroll wheel here to change the amps. Now it's going to be very small on the screen, but we can change the amps and this we change the volts. So what I'm going to do is put this down to one volt and I've put my voltmeter on a range of two, two volts. And then all you do is you tap this button and you'll see the voltage starts showing us what it's putting out. So we are looking at 1.01 .01 on the P200 and it's fluctuating on my meter. There we go, 1.0121. So there we go. Now we can then just up the voltage. So let's take it up to one and a half volts. There we go, my voltmeter show 1.51, 5.1 volts on the P200. Uh, let's try a bit more. Let's give it a bit more. Oh, we've got to change the voltmeter. So let's take it to 20 volts. And 3.2, we're saying 3.3 on the on the P200, and we're saying 3.02 on the voltmeter. So let's up it to let's go to let's go to 10. 10, we're showing 10.02 on my voltmeter, and 10 on the P200, and. We won't go, let's go to 19.8, see what happens. 19.8, and there we go, 19.8, 19.81 on my multimeter. And let's just bump this up to 200 volts, and then go, I think the maximum we can do is 30 volts. There we go, 30 volts. And we're showing, there we go, 29.9 on the, there we go, 30, so it's, it's, it's fluctuating. And you can see it's fluctuating here as well. So not really a scientific test because my multimeter is not a calibrated one, but I just wanted to do a comparison. 
Another thing you can use the P200 for is to power your receivers when you want to bind. You don't need to get a battery out. You can just plug into the power supply and give the correct voltage that you need, roughly five volts, so that you can do the binding process. So what I've got, I've set the P200 up at one amp at five volts so that I can power the, the, the receiver. And you can see my connectors that I've made up to be able to do this. So what's nice is you've got the switch on the P200. So if I go into my radio and we're going to bind this receiver now. Okay, I'm going to go to bind. Now, so what we need to do is to hold the bind button down, click the switch. Let go. Now the receiver is in bind mode. Okay, we should be good to go. Let's turn off and then turn back on again. We should be bound. There we go. Everyone's working. So that's another nice use to have it on the desk so that you haven't got to get a battery out. Another good use for the power supply is to be able to plug it into your quad so that you can power them up without getting a battery out. So if you want to just test the motors or whatever, you don't need to get a battery out. You can just plug it straight into the P200. Now I've made a lead up so that I can plug the power supply into an XD60 or an XD30. So I've set up the power supply to be on uh, 6 amps at 8 volts. So I'm just going to turn the power off. Now we're going to plug in the quad and then we just tap and you can hear that it's booted up now we should be able to arm the quad and there we go we're armed. Another use I came up for the P200 was when you're doing the battery calibration within beta flight so my theory is that when you put a battery on it it's obviously starting to deplete the voltage will start to slowly change, obviously because the quad is drawing current. But if you plug it into the P200, you will be getting a constant voltage the whole time you're trying to do the adjustment. So let's have a look at that. So let's plug my quad in to my computer. And it's come up, the Comfort 4. We're going to connect. And if we go to the battery and power, you'll see that when I turn the power onto the quad, which I'm going to do now, so I've set the P200 up uh, 6 amp at 8 volts. You'll see the voltage is coming up now. There we go. It's coming up as 8.3, 8.1, 8 volts. Now it's stabilizing. So now we can see that I'm putting a voltage of 8 volts exactly into the quad, and this is calibrated perfectly because the um, power state is showing 8 volts. So that's another use of the P200. You will have a constant battery voltage. If you put your uh, a quad battery on there, obviously that would start depleting straight away because it's a battery, but this is constant. So that's another way I feel that you could use the P200. I just want to say thank you to Toolkit RC for kindly supplying the P200 adjustable power supply I reviewed in my video. Now to my summary of the Toolkit RC P200 power supply. It uses GAN technology, which basically means that the power supply can be physically smaller and its efficiency is higher. Um, they say up to 95%, which I assume means that the conversion of the AC coming into the power going out on the power supply. Now, I've used it quite a bit so far to test it and it was been sitting on my desk and it, it worked fine. And it's, there's really not much to say about it because it does the job. It works, it works fine. The controls are very easy to use. Um, I've given you all the examples that I've used the power supply for. And the screen is nice. It gives you a lot of feedback. It's obviously physically very small. And I think it's going to take, take over the job of my Toolkit RC M8S which I was going to keep on my desk as a power supply, but now I have uh, reviewed this one and tested this one, I'm going to be using that one. 
Um, also, one of the things, obviously the main thing about having this power supply is it can power your chargers. Now, the important bit, would I buy one with my own cash? I would, I would, I would buy one. Um, it's a nice power supply. Obviously, I don't know how long uh, its longevity is going to be because I've only just got it to review it. But uh, I found it very useful and it is very easy to use. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Bye for now. There is an affiliate link in the description below if you would like to purchase the product I just reviewed, which would help support my channel. And you thought I'd finish. Well, I haven't. I want to tell you a funny story. When I received the P200 to test it, I plugged it in and I couldn't get it to work. It just would not power on. Now, it must be my age and it must be my eyesight. So I contacted Toolkit RC support who got back to me very promptly. And I said I was having a problem and I couldn't get it to turn on. And then I looked at the firmware. I could access it via the USB. Uh, I could see the firmware, but there were Chinese characters there. Uh, but I, I, and I was going to re-put the firmware on, uh, but I decided not to. I would wait until I hear back from support. Well, I heard back from support. What did I do? I did a real faux pas. And that was, I didn't turn it on because at the front, there's a tiny, a, a tiny button, which for some obscure reason, my eyes did not see. So I just wanted to share that with you, that uh, it was, uh, I just could not get it to turn on. So if you have that problem, just have a look at the little switch at the front.